Welcome back to the channel, guys. On this video, we are going to be working on some interior stuff up front here, as well as uh, some stuff on the back of the car. Specifically, we're going to try and clean up the arrow a little bit on the back, as well as address heat issues with fuel. So we'll do that on the back of the car and on the inside. I think I'm gonna try and tackle building something of a center console, center stack in here. Uh, maybe we'll get to uh, a dead pedal because I'd really like to have a dead pedal in the car. We'll see how far we get on some of this interior stuff. So stay tuned as we continue to work on the cart. this piece uh, but I printed up a uh, little bracket I made it in three pieces so I've got a little key slot and then on this side there's also a key slot and a key just dropped it uh, so that'll line everything up it uh, made more sense to print it this way uh, to get the shape I wanted and everything these two pieces I did on the first try, but this one actually took my dimensions were a little off, so it took two tries. But these are basically spring loaded tabs, essentially, and um, they snap in to the holes on the receiver like this. And now it's nice and snug, doesn't really move. And then I'll, uh, I'll glue these together so they become one piece, but this will. Go like that, and it should fix uh, the dirty arrow coming off of this hitch and clean up the air so that it's a little more effective. Threw a coat of paint on there just to protect it from the sun and make it match. I did sand it down a little bit too, but now we should have hopefully a little cleaner arrow coming off the back of this thing. Next, we are going to fabricate up a, a heat shield. I know I talked about this a few videos ago and uh, never got around to it. And uh, I've noticed a couple of small issues. Generally, I'm seeing about 74 PSI of pressure at the fuel rail. Uh, that's kind of what I expect, somewhere in the um, low 70s. Um, in my track session, 
out at Worldwide Technology Raceway. Uh, I saw a data log that put it as low as 69 at one point, which is slightly concerning, but not not overly concerning. And then uh, last week, took my wife out, um, and uh, we were just out for the evening and got in some stop and go traffic, mostly stop uh, for 15 to 20 minutes. We were mostly just idling, sitting still, and noticed fuel pressure was dropping to like 65. I think I even went as low as 64 at one point. And then as soon as I would start moving, uh, fuel pressure would start going back up. And so what I realized is the exhaust, the heat from the exhaust right here above the fuel lines is causing fuel pressure to drop. So I do need to get this uh, heat shield in here just to make sure I don't have an issue. So um, I have drafted up um, a little template of what's going to work in there. Um, just need to cut this out of a sheet of tin that I've got around. Um, so thanks to Melissa and Doug for your excellent toys and your excellent drafting software. So we'll get uh, that templated out onto a piece of tin that I've got stick sitting around. I think it actually is from an old uh, dryer that uh, we threw away, but I kept the back of it because I thought I might need it one day, and here I need it. I like keeping pieces of scrap metal around sometimes, so so we'll get this cut out of that and then mount it in here. Got my template cut out of this uh, sheet of tin, and uh, it's pretty much in there. You can kind of see how it's going to run from this... Um, bracket for my taillights up to uh, the frame and basically protect the heat. Let's see if I can get a better angle. Um, from going up to the fuel lines that are up here. So I think I'm going to leave it unpainted just because the silver will help reflect the heat back down and you really won't see too much of it. So uh, I'm going to uh, put some rivets in here to hold it in and then some rib nuts down there to hold that side in. All mounted in, I will paint the heads of these rivets black uh, soon, but uh, on the bottom I use rib nuts just so it's removable if I ever want to remove this. Um, and really from the back at the angle most people would stand, you really can't tell that it's there even though I'm leaving it shiny. Next, I am going to add a center, a centering stripe to the top of this steering wheel. Um, I read online that you can get some of this tape. Um, I forget what kind of tape it's called, but it's like a cloth tape that's supposed to do well on steering wheels that other people had good luck with. Uh, I'll put a link to Amazon where I got this down in the description, but um, it's pretty thin. And so I'll find center on this steering wheel and put a couple wraps around it uh, and we'll see how it does. I've got more tape if it comes off real quick or if I decide it's really not going to work then I'll just peel it off. Simple enough. I put two wraps of tape on there. I put the seam on the bottom just so it's not visible. And uh, the tape is actually pretty sticky so I think it'll probably do a decent job of staying in place. Next, we are working on this center console. So I've already mocked up kind of a template in cardboard. I'm gonna use some of the aluminum left over from the rear diffuser and cut this out and this will be a mounting plate. So the plan is to remove this from the bracket here. I don't like how this kind of swivels and there's not a good way to lock this down. So this plate's going to get removed completely. We're going to have a, a bracket that is fixed in place. So this will stay at this fixed angle, which is why I kind of cut this at an angle because I do want it kind of rotated up. And then we'll just bolt the sides of this to the bracket itself. And then we're going to move the COM S4S system up. And uh, I think we're going to fix it to the bottom of this. So this will sit at the top. And this will stay attached to the switch plate. 
So everything will just kind of be here. I won't have to worry about trying to reach back behind everything to get to this. This was a temporary mounting solution anyway. So we should be able to kind of clean this up a little bit, at least in terms of being able to access it for users, particularly the Com S4S system. that piece cut out and bent up and then I took the old bracket and transferred the holes over and drilled those out so that I can use the same mounting holes on the transmission tunnel so next we got to figure out uh, mounting for the switch panel itself and the com s4s system and like that everything is mounted up and uh nice angle we'll uh keep it good and away from the shift lever nothing will like rotate uh i'm gonna stick this probably back up here for the moment i'm not sure where i really want to permanently mount this little three and a half inch uh box for the terminator but pretty happy with that i'm gonna worry about painting it black later right now i'm just gonna run with it silver the raw aluminum and uh and i'll paint it at some point in the future next thing i want to tackle is putting the dead pedal in here so um i drew up a little or cut up a little template again um with the hoses running right here i find it hard to put my foot on this little piece of what used to be a dead pedal and i don't really want to be rubbing against this all the time so I'm going to cut up a sheet of aluminum and um, put this over here. I think I'm going to bend this over in this corner and this corner just so we're not got an edge on the aluminum chafing these hoses and then um, maybe uh, rib nut these in so this is removable and I can pull these hoses out uh, or I might just go straight to rivets. Not sure probably rib nuts if I, as long as I get my tool in here. So we'll uh, get to cutting this up. All right, got a little bracket cut out. I've already uh, test fitted it, uh, filed off some of the edges so it's not sharp. And then uh, through some of this edge trim, rather than folding this over, I just decided to use the edge trim I had around. So that'll protect the hoses from these edges. Next, I'll uh, drill some holes and put some rib nuts in. in there now uh, these are rib nuts on this side this side was going into fiberglass and I could not get the rib nuts to hold in place so I had to actually use a through bolt with a nut on the back side not really what I wanted to do but it was what was necessary so it's nice and firm it'll hold um, I am gonna uh, bed liner all of this this is grip tape down here and I have to replace it every couple of months. I'm tired of, you can actually see this worn through right here. So I'm tired of doing that. I think I'm gonna bedline it and hope that lasts better. And that'll cover that 
raw aluminum up there too. I've got all of that tape and the residue cleaned up. Need to run some rubbing alcohol over everything just to get it all finally clean. And then I'll mask everything off and go ahead and put some of the truck bed liner down. I'm not too concerned with behind the pedals because uh, I don't really need grip there. Uh, I might just go ahead and spray over the red just to kind of cover that up, but uh, I'm not really concerned. I'm mostly concerned about the pedal box down here. You can see previously, I don't think I ever showed this in a recording, I laid down some Bondo just to kind of get that all flat for my feet um, and then had, uh, as we discussed earlier, taped over it with some of that grip tape. So uh, I'll get all that clean, go ahead and spray the bed liner on this dead pedal as well so that has some grip on it. And while I'm at it, I may go ahead and relocate this over to the passenger side. Um, just for, I mean, it's a few pounds, but it'll, this is all the weights over on the driver's side anyway, so that'll help with balance by a few pounds. So I'll probably go ahead and remove that while I mask everything off and uh, mount it over in the same location in front of the passenger seat. I know it doesn't look it down there, but that's all cleaned up. Got the pedals masked off, so we'll get some spray in here. The directions say two coats. I'm going to put three and four, three or four, just to make sure it's nice and thick and doesn't rub off under my feet. Uh, but we'll get this sprayed in. I've never used this stuff before, so hopefully it works. This uh, Rust-Oleum truck bed pro grade. All right, that's drying up. The directions say not to put any load in it. And they're obviously talking about a truck bed for 72 hours. So I guess I won't be driving this for a few days. Uh, put the fire extinguisher right back where it came from. Once I got over there, I realized the passenger side is narrower than the driver's side, particularly right here after this kind of hump in the transmission tunnel. So it kind of has to go on this side or I had to find some other place. And I, I looked around, but I didn't really like anything. So it's going right back here and uh, we'll let this dry up. Hopefully we should be good. The last thing I'm going to tackle in here for this video is going to be something of some idiot switches. So when I turn on the blinkers, um, if the car, car is off or at an idle, sometimes, not always, because it's loud enough, I can hear the blinker switch going. But if I'm driving, I can't hear it at all. And there really isn't any sort of indication that this uh, blinker is on. So I'll turn the blinker on. And because it doesn't auto turn back off with the steering column, I'll be driving you know, sometimes 10 or 15 minutes down the highway and uh, then look over and notice that my blinker is on. Uh, and I've been driving that way for 15 miles down the highway. So to keep from looking like an idiot or a grandma, uh, I am going to wire in some LEDs into here so that uh, I can visually see uh, that the blinkers are on. And I'll wire two in, one for each side. So I picked up a pack, I think it was 15 of these LEDs with uh, these little inserts. So you just drill a hole and these LEDs kind of snap into those holes. So I'm gonna drill a couple holes in that uh, sun visor, uh, the sun shield over the dash display and shove these down in here, one on each side, one for the left and the right blinker and wire them in. All right, that's wired in, and as you can see, I've got the left turn signal on, and I get a little blinking light. Uh, same does it for the right side, so that should keep me from looking like an idiot driving down the highway. Well, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Uh, I feel like I got a lot accomplished on 
the inside uh, a lot of it's just kind of usability and comfort while driving as well as ergonomics while driving uh, cruising or on the track so thanks for watching along i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one